Hey everyone, Shoshana here with Mr. Joe Iconis, a Tony Award nominee and one of my favorite humans on this earth. How are you feeling today? Uh, feeling all right. Uh, feeling pretty good. Pretty good. I love yeah. hearing that. Yeah. Um, so I've been lucky enough to see Be More Chill kind of since the Guggenheim stage. Mm -hmm. uh, you've obviously been with it significantly longer. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about like this whole journey of Be More Chill. Be More Chill uh, has just been the wildest theatrical journey of my life. It's uh, it started in uh, 2000 and probably 11 or 12 when, when I first read the novel and uh, and decided to turn it into a musical and uh, you know Joe Trace and I and my, my collaborator worked on it for years. We had our initial production at Tour Theater in New Jersey, Red Bank, New Jersey to be exact in 2015 and uh, really thought that the show was kind of over and done with after that. We recorded the cast album. Two years later, the cast album exploded. Uh, people discovered it, turned into a viral sensation. Uh, because of that, I was able to get a producer interested in doing the show. We did the show off-Broadway last summer, summer 2018, uh, and then that was a huge hit. And so because of the ticket sales of that and the excitement around that, we were able to do a Broadway production in 2019. And uh, yeah, and that's the, that is the story of uh, Be More Chill in a nutshell. In a nutshell. No. Now, I've never seen a show enter Broadway with the amount of buzz and viral sensation that Be More Chill did. What was that like, you know, coming to Broadway and having the fans lining up already? Uh, it was really exciting, you know. I feel like for as long as I've been working in theater, uh, people have been talking about how they want, you know, young. Uh, crowds in the theater like I feel like any you know regional theater I've ever worked at it's always been about how do we get young people to come how do we bring in young people to see you know musical theater you know theater of any kind uh, and so the fact that from the very get-go uh, Be More Chill was attracting this younger audience who the show was so you know squarely speaking to was really a, a thrill you know when I wrote the show I wasn't writing for a younger audience I, I never sort of write um, you know, trying to play to a particular audience. I'm just writing work that, that speaks to me and is the kind of stuff that I want to see. Sometimes that's about young people, sometimes that's about older people, sometimes it's science fiction, sometimes it's, you know, uh, uh, a Western. Uh, uh, and so it, my, you know, the work changes with, with everything that I do, uh, but, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that you know, young people just really, uh, it, 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 it struck a chord, the virtual struck a chord with them. And so, yeah, it was really incredible to see the turnout of young people throughout the whole room. I know, so I saw the first preview and then I covered opening night, and which was super incredible and very exciting. And seeing the fans respond gave me so much hope for Broadway in a way that I don't know I've seen maybe since Hamilton, which was also a phenomenon. Um, were there any specific moments with fans that really stuck out to you? Um, you know, it's so... I've, I've been lucky enough to have so many incredible experiences experiences with fans. Uh, I mean, truly every day of my life for the last you know year plus, I have encountered someone who has really passionately and articulately told me what my work means to them. And, uh, and so it's, it, I, I don't want to say that they all blur together, but they kind of do in the best way. You know, it's like sort of, it's, it's impossible to just sort of pick one instance out. But the, it's really the, the, collective, the collective passion and the collective, uh, you know, joy that all of these strangers have, uh, you know, have, have, have laid on me uh, because of this musical I wrote has just really been the most, most remarkable thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty great. Iconis and family, if people don't know, is a way that Mr. Joe Iconis brings in his family and friends to play around on stage together and bring us this music and art that really doesn't just feel like it's on the stage, it's a collective of everyone uh, in the audience. So the, the Be More Chill post-show hangs, I feel like really encompassed all of that. What was the inspiration for it? Yeah, I mean the you know I because the the show Be More Chill was sort of born out of my career, which really is sort of you know very kind of like you know the, uh, the you know the pull up your pants and put on a show in a, in a dark basement and and you know performing theater with you know people who want to be there um, who are just sort of making their own space. It felt like oh how cool would it be if we could sort of do that on a Broadway stage if we could sort of do these you know. These 
these shows that are totally like homegrown, just you know, an actor and a, and a keyboard, um, you know, in a sort of conversational, uh, you know, the, the post show performance with the audience. Uh, and so it just felt like, um, you know, symbolically and, uh, and uh, spiritually, that was the kind of thing that we wanted to do uh, with the show. And also, it was something that, you know, we're uh, obviously we're not a show that was based on a movie, we're not a show that had famous people in it. And so it was really hard for us to keep. Uh, you know, keep the the spotlight on us. You know, in a really crowded theater season, and so you know, when you're when you're when you're working on a show like ours, um, it's you know, it, it, it's like you got to be creative in, in ways to kind of you know get the word out. And so this always felt like something that we wanted to do. In the dream scenario, we would have done it as like a victory lap. <laughs> you know, like that would have been like a really nice thing. Uh, in, in our case, it was like, oh, what can we do to like keep people talking about our musical? And that's where it was born out of. But it really, um, you know, it became such a wonderful thing. And when we first started doing them, we didn't know if people would stay. You know, it was kind of scary, but people did. And it was so heartening to see like, oh, people, you know, are gonna sit and watch this whole, you know, two and a half hour musical based on something that they don't really know what it is. Um, and then they're gonna stay for an even more show and, and listen to another, you know, brand new musical theater song that they've never heard before, uh, sung by a great actor. It's just, it was really cool. It was cool. Yeah, I love seeing the audiences Wednesday night because I felt like a lot of people specifically were like, well, if I can get more free Joe Iconis and family, like, yeah. why wouldn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was so nice. It's like, I always have, I feel like I have a a very old school mentality about that kind of stuff where it's like I always feel like yeah concerts should be you know long and give people you know like bang for their buck you know it's like why would you want to just see one movie when you see a double feature it's like keep it you know don't you don't you want that and so I like a I like a I like a ripe overstuffed experience always Definitely. yeah and with post show show Shauna I always felt like I kind of had this like cool little connection to it you did I mean it's your name it's because your name has show in it that's why yeah just to explain Thanks. that. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> Just for those watching at home. Um, this last one with Andrew Keenan Bolger, mm -hmm. who's literally spray painting his hair blue as he's singing. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen anyone do that. That's like a lot to, to kind of handle. Um, what was it like on stage playing the piano and seeing it? It was, uh, you know, it was pretty thrilling. I When I first wrote that song, Blue Hair, I always had the 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 dream that um, when you know the song is about a young woman who's dying her hair blue. I always had this dream that when that when the show ever reached the stage, that she would actually dye her hair blue on stage. Uh, now I didn't really realize the the sort of time frame of of, of hair dyeing. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't properly research it. Um, uh, nor did I realize um, the the sort of mechanics of microphones and things like that on stage. So I go, you can't actually can't actually do that. Um, so that was always sort of in the back of my brain. Brain, and it was always in the back of my brain because I, uh, you, you know, I always remember reading about South Pacific during I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair, how Mary Martin actually washed her hair on yeah. stage. And so I've always felt like Blue Hair was kind of a spiritual cousin to that song. And so seeing Andrew Keenan Bolger um, sing the song on a Broadway stage while spray painting his hair blue, I felt like finally that song was part of the great tradition of the American musical theater. Yes. Yes, it was. I know everyone around me in the theater were like, oh my God, look what he's doing. Yeah. And I got it on video, so you can check that out at BYShow.com. Watch it at home. We had to put tarps down, though. Really? So he didn't stay on the stage, yeah. Like as if he was like a new puppy or something. <laughs> you know, Aww, him, yeah, Andrew. making a mess on the floor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit more about your lovely wife, uh, because it's not so common, maybe it is and I don't know, but to have someone, a, a wife, Lauren Marcus, who is incredible and has one of the best voices, to have her sing your songs on Broadway, and then to see you watching her perform it and at the Jonathan Larson Project, like seeing that love between the two of you, honestly, like not being too corny, like restored my faith in true love. Like, what is it like to be a part of that? It's, uh, well, it's an act. She, uh, <laughs> we're both actors hired yeah. by the William Morris Endeavor Agency. Um, and uh, but no, it's uh, you know it's the best thing in the whole world. I uh, I just I you know I love her so much as a human being, and I and I love her so much as a as a as an artist. And I you know I, I first encountered her as an actor. I was a fan before I was a husband, and uh, and so it's it's just great. You know, there's obviously like really blurry lines in my life as far as like you know work and and play and you know 
home and all that. Uh, and you know, and so so many of the the artists who I work with are people who are really close to me. And, and I, you know, it's 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 a it's a way of working that is that is many times very challenging, and it it immediately opens you up to like having you know people look at you know look at you and say like you know and, and cry nepotism and, and you talk about like oh he just wants to work with his friends, which is like the easiest thing in the whole world to say. Um, but you know, I think that there actually is worth in it. There there obviously is worth in it because I mean you know this like got to Broadway by you know me like working with my friends um, and so uh, yeah but just you know Lauren Marcus in particular I just can't believe that I get to be I get to be uh, married to her and I, I love working on stuff with her but I also love you know going to see her in something that I had nothing to do with you know before Beer and Chill she had like this amazing um, run of playing really like, dope parts and great productions right and so she was in um, this musical Beatsville with Max Crumb that uh, it was at uh, Oslo Rep in Sarasota that I was like obsessed with. And so it, uh, which makes me, that and that makes me happy. The fact that it's like, oh, it feels, it feels like, yeah, duh. Why wouldn't we, you know, have a cast that looked like this, so. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love seeing the people who I see on the subway also represented on the stage. Yeah. Right? It's just yeah. like, we're New Yorkers. We should see each other yeah. in roles. Yeah, and it's just something that, you know, from the beginning of my career, I've just never responded to musicals that have casts of people who all look like, um, look like models, you know, or like casts of people who look like, um, you know, the, like these, I, I used to call them musical theater robots, <laughs> you know, and just they all, and like, so they just look like the same, you know, and I, and I think that, and it's totally valid, like I'm not like hating on, you know, Definitely. I'm not hating on, you know, very like beautiful, um, you know, like a perfectly, you know, chiseled, uh, blonde, you know, like white people, like they're, they're great. I know a lot of them and some of them are very talented, some of them. Um, but there's just, I think there's just more types of people in the world and so I'm interested in like exploring the others. Well said. Yeah. And now to our fans, what would you like to say directly to the Mr. Joe Iconis fans? Uh, I would like to say thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the work of all of these artists who I've uh, surrounded myself with. I hope that I have uh, done you proud and I promise that I will continue to uh, do whatever I can uh, to give you stuff that you can uh, get excited by. And so if you keep, uh, keep following, um, I'll, uh, I'll keep delivering, or at least I'll try my best. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. And this has been so lovely. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day. Of course. And um, you're just you're just so lovely. So thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day. You're great. You too.